the learning outcome one deals with the idea of when light is passing from one medium into another. Uh, and by obliquely, it means not at uh, 90 degrees to the medium or zero degrees to the normal. So remember, we always measure angles from the normal. So if this is medium one, then that's theta one. And if this is medium two, this is theta two. And what we find is that the ratio sine theta one over sine theta two is a constant. And building on this, for uh, when medium one is air, or strictly speaking, a vacuum, then we give that constant a name and we call it the absolute refractive index. Now, often we'll not include the word absolute and we'll just refer to it as the refractive index. And that applies whether something is entering air or leaving uh, air. Okay, entering the medium, leaving the medium as well. It applies in, in all cases. Right, but the equation doesn't change whether it's entering or leaving. So therefore, to measure... Uh, that refractive index, you would have air, usually, you could do it in a vacuum, but and the medium that you're interested in, and you would simply measure these angles theta 1 and theta 2. Measure theta 1 and theta 2. Using a protractor. And we do that for a range of angles rather than just do it for one single one. The beam of light I should put in here is produced by a ray box. So it's a fairly simple experiment to be familiar with. Number four kind of stands uh, on its uh, own. A simple statement one again. Refractive index depends on the frequency of light. Of the incident light. Now, in most cases, the difference is very, very small between different frequencies. And we tend to ignore that, or you'll find in a question that refers to things like uh, monochromatic light. So we don't need to worry about different frequencies. Monochromatic means single colour, therefore single frequency. Um, but uh, as we'll see, we can look at examples where you look at dispersion, i.e. if you start with white light with all the different frequencies mixed together, then you get the red and the violet and all the colours in between bend by slightly different amounts and that's what leads to uh, a triangular prism uh, dispersing white light into uh, a colour spectrum. Another statement fact for number five. The frequency of a wave is unaltered during refraction. And number six builds on the idea the speed wavelength and usually direction with so one exception being when it goes in at, at right angles or along a normal, all change 
Turing refraction. And from that we, we find the equation, so we don't actually need to prove this. So the equation that we introduced earlier, Lincoln refractive index to direction, can also be extended to dealing with wavelength and speed. Now in the formula sheet, they don't include the n, so you've got that formula, n equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, and then in a different line, You've got that, but that essentially means they are all equal to each other. So, for instance, you can work out uh, a speed in a medium of, you know, the speed in the air using N equals V1 over V2. So, V, uh, medium 1 is always air in this, um, in this first formula because it's find N. If medium 1 wasn't air, then you can use the sets of formulas in the, the second equation there. Um, but that would be very, very rare. So we'll look at some worked examples of these. So this worked example is to find the refractive index. Of this material. The first thing we've got to notice that in this example, not all examples, but in this example, they've given the angles relative to the medium, right? Relative to the surface there, whereas Angles should always be relative to the normal. So we've got a wee bit of work to do first hand to work out the actual angles. So theta 1 isn't 30 degrees. Theta 1 is 90 minus 30. And you just need to look carefully at the diagram to decide whether you subtract it from 90 or if you're just given that angle directly. Theta 2 is in the medium, so it's 90 minus 54. And then a formula is N sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Sine 60 over 36. And plugging into our calculator, and we get the refractive index is 1.47. So for part A, we know that the Angle theta 1 here, once again, we've got to subtract it from 90. So theta 1 is 60 degrees, and we're told that N is 1.53. So our formula, again, and then plugging in. Yeah, and then rearrange to get sine theta 2 and sine 60 divided by 1.53 and then inverse sine gives you theta 2. B, the frequency of blue light in air and in glass. So first of all, we start with air. We're told that the wavelength in the air, so I'm going to label that lambda 1, is 500 nanometers. We're being asked the frequency in the air, so I'll label that F1. And we know that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So now we can use V equals F lambda to link these together. So 3 times 10 to the 8 equals F and 500 nanometers, I should have done this when I was listening, 500 times 10 to the minus 9, and rearranging that, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 500 times 10 to the minus 9 is 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. The most visible frequencies, uh, or all visible frequencies are in the kind of six, uh, 10 to the 14 hertz range. Now, that's the frequency in air, but what we've just written is the frequency in glass is the same. Okay, frequency doesn't change during refraction. 
We're going to have to jump backwards and forwards a wee bit for this question, but the speed of light in glass. See? Now, there are various ways of doing this. We can use the fact that N is 1.53 and V1 is 3 times 10 to the power 8 to get V2. Or you could use sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 equals V1 over V2 because you've got theta 1 and theta 2. But I'll go with this because it's a, a bit more straightforward. Okay, and plugging in. Rearranging V2 will be 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.53 is 1.96 and then we've got all sorts of options for getting lambda 2 so we could use the fact that we know lambda 1 and we know n that's probably the easiest or we could use v equals f lambda within the medium we could use v1 over v2 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2. Lots of uh, different possibilities. And rearranging that gives us or three hundred and twenty six nanometers. Let me do one more worked example. In this example, find the angle X. F for this particular material, F for red light, uh, N for red light, sorry, is 2.21, and for blue light, N is 2.28. So basically, we are given theta 1. 90 minus 40. Once again, the stress, although all the worked examples I've done have been based like that, you need to look at the question and decide is the angle given from the normal or not. You don't always necessarily have to subtract from 90. So theta 1 is 50 degrees, whether it's red or blue. Right, but if we take them as the two extremes of, of white light and want to work out uh, the angle X, then we need to work out the angles of refraction for the red light and the blue light. So we need separate bits of working for each. So for red, theta 2 is what we're trying to work out. N is 2.21. So it's N equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. 2.21 equals sine 50 over sine theta 2. Sine theta 2.3466 and therefore theta 2 is 20.3 degrees. And then just repeat the whole thing again for blue using the different value of n. Three three six and theta two 
is 19.6 degrees. So x is the difference between these two. It's 0.7 degrees. So 7, total internal reflection. And all of the light on an inside edge the medium reflects i.e. none refracts so all of it bounces back inside the material number 8 the critical angles it's a, a closely aligned idea Basically, the critical angle is the last angle at which refraction takes place. But that's what it's kind of useful for. But its definition is the angle in the medium for which the angle in air is 90 degrees. So based on this idea we've just introduced, sort of diagram, so if you've got your medium, so I've turned this whole thing around 90 degrees just to show you we can have to deal with, with different things. Your medium and the angle in the medium then that is theta c, so it normally be theta 1, but that is theta c if the refracted angle is right along the surface, i.e. that and there's a right angle or 90 degrees. So to measure align the ray in the medium so that the refracted ray is along the surface. Measure the angle in the medium using a protractor. They often would do this with a semicircular block because we I mean, actually need to copy this bit down, but in a semicircular block, if you're shining exactly at the middle of the flat side, then the angle between the ray and the curved side will be 90 degrees, which makes just setting this experiment up a lot easier so you can shine your, your ray box in. like that, and measure your angle of refraction. So using that idea that the angle in the medium, so theta 2, is equal to the critical angle, when the angle in air is equal to 90 degrees, then we can use our formula to derive a new formula for the critical angle. So n is sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, sorry. But in this case, that is equal to sine 90 over sine theta c. So sine 90 is 1. And rearranging, we get sine theta c equals 1 over n. So that's our formula for the critical angle. And then 11 will practice out
practice examples is using that. So in this example, we're given that n is 1.5. So from that, we can work out the critical angle. So the sine theta C uh, inverse sine of both sides. And that gives you theta C is 42 degrees. And then we make a clear statement. Try again. The angle of incidence. Make it clear that you know what that is. 60 degrees. is greater than the critical angle. Oh, not as much use work for my spelling today. So total internal reflection occurs. And that's the safest way to show that total internal reflection occurs. There is another way that if you start by assuming it was going to refract so, and just analyse it as you do any other question. So you put theta 2, the angle of the medium is 60 degrees, n is 1.5, and you plug that into the formula. Remember, even though we're going from the medium into air, Theta 2 is always the angle in the medium. So, uh, theta 1 isn't the first angle, as it were. It's always the angle in the air. So if you do that and substitute in your numbers, uh, rearrange that, then you get sine theta 1, the angle in the air, You plug that in, you get 1.3. And then if you do inverse sine of 1.3, right, you get an error in your calculator because sine theta can't be greater than 1. So basically this is showing you that the refraction formula doesn't work. It doesn't apply in this case because there is no refracted light. So it tells you total internal reflection occurs. But what I would say is it would be much safer at this point to go back and work out the critical angle if you didn't already know it and show that your angle of instance is greater than the critical angle just like we did in the, the previous page. And the last one is just familiarity with some uses of refraction and total internal reflection. So lenses have many uses. Which has uh, spectacles for correcting vision, telescopes, etc. Another uh, point about refraction is the idea that um, it leads to dispersion. So you get the triangular prism, and one of the reasons that diamonds. There's actually two reasons linked together. Because their high refractive index makes the critical angle smaller, so it makes total internal reflection more likely. So first of all, a diamond and a piece of jewellery, for instance, is going to reflect more light. But also, the difference in the refractive index for different frequencies means you get more dispersion. Bigger differences.
the f frequencies. Means more. Dispersion. I. Different colors seen in the reflection. Bike reflectors. Use total internal reflection to maximize the amount of light reflected. And optical fibers. Is total internal reflection it's not light which is carrying data repeatedly reflects. along the fiber. 